I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on measurements. Normally, if we consider just one shape, then finding parameters of that particular shape is relatively simple. But when you combine two or more, it becomes a complex question. And those are the kind of questions which we are going to look into in this video. We'll actually consider volume and surface area of spheres and cylinder. So to begin with, let me give you the formulas, right? So when we talk about sphere, in that case, the volume of a sphere is what? Volume is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube, right? And the surface area, let me call this a surface area of a sphere will be 4 pi r square, correct? Where r is the radius. So whenever we consider a sphere, we are taking r as a parameter for a sphere. Now when we talk about a cylinder, let's write here. So for a cylinder, what is the volume? Volume of a cylinder is area of the base, let's say this is the base, which is circular, of let's say radius r and then we'll take height as h of our cylinder right so in that case area of the base is pi r square and times height h gives you the volume now as far as the surface area is concerned there are three surfaces for any cylinder some questions may have open top but in general we'll consider two circular surfaces which are these two the area of these two is 2 times area of circle pi r square and then we have a lateral surface right so kind of a curved surface which is shown here so this is 2 pi r the circumference times the height right so that becomes another surface so let's say this surface right so 2 pi r is the length if you cut it open it will be 2 pi r as the length of a rectangle of height h. So that is how you get this formula. So the surface area for a cylinder is 2 pi r squares, those are the two circles, and the lateral area of 2 pi r h. Okay. Now with this in mind, let us now solve some excellent questions where we are going to mix and match with sphere and cylinder. So here is the first question. A cylindrical jar of height 12 centimeters, radius 4 centimeter, is half filled with water. Let's say we have a jar here which is kind of filled with water. Find the change in height of the water level in the jar if a metal sphere of radius 3 centimeter is placed in it without spilling the water. So, so that is the question for you. You can now pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now, that is the kind of questions which sometimes create challenges. So if you know how to solve such questions, you will be very successful in your test. Let's look into it. So basically what is happening is that when you place something inside this water, in this case it is the spherical ball, then it is going to occupy some volume and so the water level is going to increase. So we are interested in finding this change in height, right? So we are interested in finding only the change in height. Now why will this height of water change? It is because this sphere has a volume which will be displaced by the water and the height will increase. So that is the basic concept known to us. So what should we calculate? That is important to understand. So first thing which we should calculate is the volume of sphere, right? The formula as we discussed was uh, for a sphere 4 by 3 pi r cube, right? So volumes are always cubic. So the formula should involve uh, cubes, right? Some way or the other. So in our case, we are given that the radius of the sphere is, so this radius is given to us as radius of the sphere is 3 centimeters. This is 3 centimeters. So this volume will be 4 by 3 pi 3 square. 
right? So now, in such questions, you may be allowed a calculator or you may not be allowed a calculator. Let's be very clear about it, right? So the calculator may be allowed or calculator may not be allowed. So let us solve this without calculator, right? There will be different kinds and levels of tests in which there could be a restriction. So we are going to solve this without calculator, okay? Let us see how we could do it without calculator. So in this case, sorry, pi r q, so three, right? So you could actually simplify this particular expression. You write this as four by three pi and is three times three times three, right? So that cancels, you get nine times four, 36 pi. So leave pi as such. If the calculator is not allowed, don't complicate your question, right? Now, this volume will change the height of this water level in the cylinder. Now, what is the volume change? So instead of finding the half volume and all those things, what we should see is what is the volume of a cylinder? Volume of the cylinder is pi r squared times height. Now, if that is the volume, then the change is also same as the change in height. Do you understand? In this cylinder, the radius is not going to change. The only thing which is going to change is the height. So we could actually work only with the change in height and it is because of this volume. Perfect. So that is the correlation. So basically, we can directly find the change in height using 36 pi as the volume. You get the idea, right? So we'll equate the change. So, so basically, you need to equate the changes. All these things are very important to understand since they help you save time while solving questions, right? So we'll write delta H as our change in height or simply H, right? So let's write simply H. So what we see here is that this particular change in height should be equal to 36 pi since the result is because of this particular metal sphere. Perfect. So that means we can equate and the only unknown is height for us. R is known to us. A cylindrical jar with height of 12 centimeters and radius of 4 centimeters. So we are going to use the radius of 4 centimeter for the cylindrical jar in this particular equation and find height. Does make sense? So we could write this as pi. R for us is 4 centimeters. So 4 square times height is equals to 36 pi. Now clearly from here you could calculate after cancelling out the common factors on both the sides. So those are pi's right. So that cancels. So what you get here is height equals to 36 divided by 4 square which is 16. Now this could be simplified right. So we need to just simplify this. Both could be divided by 4. So 4 and 4 times 9. So what you get here is 9 over 4. Does make sense? So option C is the right option in our case. Is that clear to you? So that is how we could actually solve a question like this in any test paper. And it has been easily done without the use of calculator. I hope you understand and appreciate our approach in this particular case. Right? Now let's take the next question. Here is question number two. If the surface area of cylinder and sphere shown in the figure is equal, find the radius r of the sphere. So that is the sphere and let's say this is the radius r which we need to figure out. What are we given? We are given a cylinder whose diameter is 8 centimeters, height is 14 centimeters. So once you are given the diameter, you can say the radius r is equal to 4 centimeters. You will note that I have given you a different kind of alphabet here, right? These two radiuses are different, right? We know this one is given to us as 4 and the height is given to us as 14. Does it make sense to you, right? Okay, 
Now I'll read the question once again. It says, if the surface area of cylinder and sphere shown in this figure are equal. So their surface areas are equal. We need to find the radius of the sphere, right? So uh, for a sphere, what is the surface area? And for a cylinder, what is the surface area? We gave you the formulas right in the very beginning, right? So we're talking about the surface areas of these two, which are equal. For a sphere, it is 4 pi r square, right? And for a cylinder, we have three surfaces. One is the lateral surface, and the other two are those circular surfaces, right? So these two surfaces, which, let me write this as 2 times pi r square, and then we have a lateral surface, which is this circular path, which is 2 pi r, right? and this circular thing right so when you cut open that will be 2 pi r the circle and height h so that is what you're given so these two things are absolutely equal now i should have used different r since i'm saying this capital r and they are not equal so i preferably should use both as capital or different r you could write r1 and r2 right so let me use capital r Okay, now let us substitute what we are given. So we have 4 pi here. This r we don't know. We need to find. Here we have 2 pi and this r is known to us, which is 4, right? So we'll write 4 square here plus 2 pi. And here r and h both are given to us. So we'll write 4 times 14. Correct? That is what is known. The only unknown here is r square. So we can write r square as equal to both of them divided by 4 pi. So let me write down separately. 4 pi, 4 square is 16, right? Let's write 16 here, divided by 4 pi plus. So this is 4 pi, okay? And, uh, and the number is 4 times. So let's write like this. We know 4 will cancel. So let's write like this. 4 and then 14, okay? Calculator is not allowed and therefore, or we could do like this, right? Now, cancel out whatever you can. So pi and pi will cancel, right? Oh, this was 4 pi, I'm so sorry. We have to divide both by 4 pi. And then we can cancel these numbers, 4 and 4. And this 4 goes 4 times, right? Now we have a much simpler expression. We have r squared equals to 2 times 4, 2 times 4 plus here we have uh, 2 times 14, 2 times 14. So that is what we get after cancelling everything, right? So you could actually take uh, uh, 2 common or you can just add them up, right? So you could say 8 plus 4 times 2 is 28 and that gives you 36, right? So R will be square root of 36, always a positive quantity and that gives you 6 as your answer. So option C is the right option. Does it make sense to you? So strictly speaking, if you know the method of doing just as we did, it should not take more than a minute. Within a minute, you can actually get this answer. So I'd like you to pause this video, try it on your own, time it out. Now this timing is very important since we are heading towards answering some questions for uh, entrance examinations or for very good test papers to get a good job, right? So those are the objectives for this kind of video which I am producing for you now. I hope that makes sense, right? So try it out, time yourself, and then move on to the next question. Here is the third question. If the volume of cylinder and sphere shown in the figure is equal, find the radius r of the sphere. So this time we again have to find the radius r of the sphere. We are given that these volumes are same. So we are now comparing the volumes, right? Okay. Now what is the volume of a sphere? We are given both are equal, right? So we know volume of sphere is equal to that of cylinder. The formulas are, now I hope you have learned all the formulas by now, right? It's 4 by 3 pi r cube equals to, for the cylinder, pi 
different radius right pi r square h so where r is the radius of this right in our case radius is given to us as half of 8 right we can find this as 4 so that is given to us we also know the height h is 18 right we know height is 18 so in this particular equation the only unknown is the radius of the sphere which you can easily calculate i would like you to stop the video here calculate the value of r without calculator perfect now let's do it so we have this equation as 4 by 3 pi r cube equals to pi this radius is 4 so i'll substitute 4 here with a square and height is 18 right so that is what is given to us so immediately cancel out the pi to simplify and now we can say r cube is equal to what so we have 4 square which is 4 times 4 and then we have here 18 these decimals means multiplication okay and cross multiply so we have 3 and then we have over 4 correct so that is what we get now let's cancel whatever we can and find out what the radius could be so radius is cube root of what you have now in cube root it is good to think about cubes right so when you have 4 18 and 3 it is better to write 18 as 9 times 2 so we have 4 times 18 which is 9 times 2 and this is the number 3 why am i writing this in this fashion mainly because i want you to understand and appreciate that if a question is given without calculator that means you could really solve it without calculator with ease right so look here if you combine 4 and 2 you actually get 8 and if you combine 9 and 3 you actually get 27 right now we are doing cube root sorry so we have to find cube root. now cube root of 8 is 2 and cube root of 27 is 3 so when you multiply you get 6 as your answer which is option c does it make sense to you so so as you can understand in most of the test papers if the calculator is not allowed it is very easy to figure out the answer by rearranging the numbers so when you work with numbers try to keep this thing in your mind then it becomes simpler for you to solve such questions so that is an excellent tip i hope you understand and appreciate it now let's take the next question now here is the real test question for you the question is a soap company wants to package their soap in different types of shapes cylindrical and spherical if the ratio of radius for spherical and cylindrical packaging is 3 is to 2 find possible dimensions of the cylindrical packaging we are given four options correct now this is a very complicated question which i am going to leave for you to do right so we are given two different shapes so one is cylindrical right so this is this is like now it looks like a cylindrical right okay the other one uh, sorry a sphere the other one is a cylinder which is kind of like this okay So what are we given here we are given that these are the two packages with same surface area right so a soap company wants to package their soaps in different types of shapes spherical and cylindrical if the ratio of radius for spherical and cylindrical packaging is 3 is to 2 3 is to 2 means what if this is uh, let's say 3x then this radius is 2x does it make sense to you that is what it means when we say that the ratio of the packaging is 3 is to 2 perfect then it says find possible dimensions of cylindrical packaging we need to find 2x what should it be and what is the height so that is what we need to find and what it is saying is that the radius is 2 height is 12 radius is 2 height is 14 radius is 4 height is 14 radius is 4 height is 18 these are all the options for you it does make sense to you right so uh, find possible dimensions of cylindrical packaging so one condition which i have not mentioned here for the same volume right so uh, soap and company they have same volume
okay so a soap company wants to package their soap in different types of shapes so that means we are taking the same volume and we could package either in this form or in that form so that is implied now to make it absolutely clear i'm writing a soap company wants to package their soap in different shapes for same volume right and these are the two shapes but the thing is the radius of the sphere whatever they have designed and the radius of the cylinder are in the ratio of 3 to 2. Find possible dimensions of the cylindrical package. So that becomes a question for you. Is that clear? So we know that their volumes are same. Volumes basically just as we did is 4 by 3 by R cube. So this is, I mean, let me write 3 here now. 3x cube. This is equal to the other volume which is pi r square pi r is 2x square times height right so you are given this particular condition and from this condition you need to figure out what is the right answer right so when we say radius r then radius means what 2x so the radius given to you here r is the radius of this r is it okay so so the radius for you becomes two times x is it okay so when you solve this you have to see which values fill satisfy this condition i'm actually not going to solve it that is a hint for you now take your time answer and post your questions in comments All right so i like post answers in comments below correct so that is where we leave you so this is a very important question try to do it if you don't have any clue of it in that case uh, we'll look into a solution next week okay so what we have covered in this particular video is we have seen how surface area and volume are related for sphere and cylinders. We took a few examples where we kind of combined the two things and we left you with a very interesting question to do. I'm going to answer this question in a couple of days. I'm waiting for your reply on that question. Right? Feel free to contact me. Here is my email address. And if you have any suggestions or comments, feel free to share them with us. Thanks for watching and all the best.